Hey, what's up guys? So today we're going to go over and kind of discuss how you go about picking your formations whenever you're going around and fighting other players, or more specifically joining rallies, that kind of thing. So to begin with, right, a lot of people, really I don't know why, what they like to do is they'll take all of their troops that they have, that they've got constructing, right? And of course this is the, you know, the time, uh, tail is as old as time itself. Do I train or do I promote? My answer to this question is, is how many of these troops do you have? And if you have more of them, you should promote. And here's why. If you don't, you're going to find that somebody will hit you and fill your infirm full of those troops. And then these troops that you want to keep will die and you don't get them because your infirmary is full. So I recommend you promote because you can train more at a time that way anyway okay then when you've got them up to the highest tier that you can then start training you know because that to me makes more sense right now you, you can do this however you want I'm just throwing that out there now the main thing is whenever you're sending a formation okay I'm of the opinion that the 40% infantry 30% marksman and 30% lancer should be your standard march for every single thing you ever do if you take 30% of what you have, all right, the logic going into this, you kind of have to understand mechanics, right? Which is to say that your marksmen, okay, are going to beat your infantry. Your infantry are going to beat your lancers. And your lancers are going to beat your bloody marksmen. However, how does that happen, right? Well, when you smack somebody, obviously your infantry are going to get in the combat first. So naturally your lancers are going to be behind them, and behind those are going to be your marksmen. The thing is, marksmen, okay, more or less, you want to improve their lethality and their attack as much as you can. Because you want to kill these troops as fast as you can. Why? Because if these troops die, the first thing that happens is your infantry are then going to run into their lancers. And their lancers, as you now might know, the mechanics of this is really straight, straightforward. So, obviously, as soon as the infantry line falls, the lancers are next runner up to get screwed. So, as soon as that happens, then they die, and then naturally your marksmen behind that die, right? So, infantry HP and defense is something I think a lot of people should focus on as far as their infantry is concerned. I mean, if you had to choose between the three stats you work on, I'd say you, you, you want to buff the infantry HP and defense. You want to increase the lethality and attack with marksmen. But then the question becomes, what do I do with my lancers? The lancers, I think, much in the same case that you have with the marksmen, you want that to be high as well because that is going to decrease the number of marksmen they have. And naturally, the marksmen that they have is what's killing your infantry line. So this is this little additive in between that you want to work on so that they don't have as an effective balance against your own infline. Okay? So long term, I think lethality is a big, 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 big focus and attacks a focus. Okay, in terms of what the difference is, attack is going to, you know, eat into their defense stat, while lethality is going to eat into their HP stat. But fundamentally, at the end of the day, you got to keep those troops alive long enough to do the damage. So obviously you need to be stronger than your opponent. You know, that is to say that if you're not stronger in inf range and cav, and say, you know, in this case, all right, I'll give you some reports just to give you kind of a, a contextual example. Okay. And this is this is important to understand. You have to understand that you okay, you can have a million or so, but if it's comprised of T5, that isn't gonna cut it, okay, when you're going up against somebody with T8. So you also need to be very weary of like not only are you needing to be conscious of how many troops you have you also need to be conscious of what tier they are as well you know if you have an army comprised full like in this case this was a really great battle that we had back and forth because it contextually can tell you that well by looking at the troop power i had more infantry and because i had more infantry his troops didn't live long enough to mine and even though he was doing a little better in these two areas the biggest problem he had is I had lots of 7s, lots of 8s, 
and he had lots of fives and lots of sixes. And that adds up. Now, even though he was doing really well here, here, and here, I was doing well there, and then I was doing really well down here. Now, of course, I wasn't far, right? But you can really see where his advantage was and where his disadvantages were. All, by all accounts, he really should have been doing better in almost every way, because when you look at the details, okay, I was sending a lot of T9s. Okay, I had, a, I had a numbers advantage on him, and that's one advantage I had for going for me, because even though he had T10 units, you can see that he threw in a mixture. And a lot of these crummier, not so useful troops, like T1s and T2s and T3s and T4s and T5s, these are what ruin a rally. It makes you look bigger, but that doesn't mean you do better, okay? And so you really, really need to stray away from doing that. <laughs> I see people do it, and I don't know why they do it. It's, it's silly, because it really, really takes away from your march. Um, if anything, try to keep out your bad troops. In other words, and if you're the rally lead and you're the captain, you need to keep mostly T7s, mostly T8s, mostly T9s, but preferably the highest tier troop available so you can get the best possible result. Even if that means that you could have a full rally, obviously, you know, if it's if it's too small, yeah, there is a problem there too. And that's one advantage versus disadvantage we had. You know, we had 500,000, but it was comprised of mostly T7, T8, and T9. But that was, you know, that's manageable when you go against somebody with almost a million and a vast majority of it's made of T, you know, it's comprised of T5s and T4s and T3s. It just doesn't sit well. It doesn't work. And, and there's a good reason for this, you know. But fundamentally, what I'm getting across to you is, is when you're building your formations, I, I feel as though when you comprise them, don't do this. Don't mixture everything in tier-wise. It's a bad idea. Don't equalize, basically. What you want to do is something kind of similar to what I was doing. Just to say, I was sending, you know, out of 100,000 troops almost, I was sending about 40,000 infantry and then about 26 to 30k of lancers and marksmen. And that's that's what I was sending. And, you know, I just I did it over and over and over, and it just seemed to be doing really, really well. Now, there is by no means, you know, a, a perfect solution to this. But like when you go into like bear trap, for example, you know, a bear, obviously you can have a lot of infantry, but you're not going to find yourself doing a whole lot of damage to it compared to your marksmen and your, you know, your, you know, I mean, that's, and that's the other thing, right? Is that there are so many things at play here that you have to be kind of conscious of. Like, for example, here we have 95,000 troops to 66. Thousand. And I was just hitting a guy that didn't have anywhere near the amount of stuff I had. I, I beat him across the board, and I was just starting out. One thing that kind of jumped out at me that, you know, is almost obvious right away is the tier of heroes that you have and the skills they have is going to play into this quite a bit. Because looking at this, you can see Ice Dominion procced a lot. Fluorescence procced a lot. So, I mean, these two are getting used really, really well. But if you look at, like, my skills, I mean, hell, I've, I've got something real similar going on for me, too, because I, too, did Molly and Bhakti. And very good combination, but I had T9s. So you get Molly whopped. You know, it's just, like, it, it's not even a question of can he survive. Now, he's, he's, he's at a disadvantage in every way imaginable. So the second hit, as you might imagine, did not go to plan that guy was in he, he's he's hurting <laughs> you know the second hit you can see i mean even though he's got ice dominion and he can kill some of those troops okay i just completely mollywopped with this you know and now, of course calling of the snow was used so i was able to stun an ice dominion got procked off of just molly you know but this one march went through and just completely decimated whatever he had left for the most part. I mean, with what little we're alive, I mean, with so little surviving, it's, it's no, there's not much point in, you know, hitting it further unless you had more resources, you know, so you don't want to overdo it when you're attacking players, but generally it favors the defender. You generally will lose a lot of troops trying to attack other players. So when you're hitting on forts and base like this, though, and again, here's another example of where here you can see I've lost 79,000 to his 267,000. 
and it really just comes down to tier. I mean, don't get me wrong, he, he was both a Furnace level 30, he had a maxed out Furnace and everything. I was Furnace level 26, so I had a numbers disadvantage. But even with the numbers disadvantage, it makes a huge difference to have a higher quality tier troop in your march and that really really shined through here and you know even here like i got 384 from marksman attack um if we even look at like the battle details and i just look at, at my skill you can see how like what really triggered a stupid amount was ice dominion killing almost sixty thousand troops um of course volley only triggered once ambusher triggered once geronimo triggered like four times which you know it, it all adds up you know it's one of those things that it really, really, really makes a huge difference. Now, if you look at like his skill, okay, again, Ice Dominion comes up quite a bit. Uh, you can see Volley came in here a little bit to his aid, but that was, you know, that was just the skill for you know a hit where again, I, I'm I'm on I'm I'm up against the odds, you know, but I I still came out on top because of that tier, you know, and so that's that's really really important. But now I'll show you like a, a march where I failed. Um, so like here, okay, I was holding base 506,000 to 766, and you can see I, I lost 150k to his 59, and I was defending. Now, again, you, you might be looking at that and going, well, okay, he still has a numbers advantage on you. What has changed? But you can see the infantry that I had is gone. They took the brunt of the blow. And the problem is, is that when you get hit, you need to have everybody in the fort re- Fill. Now, they don't need to pull, they just need to dispatch and refill. Because what will happen is, is that your infantry line will get pulled out, and so you've got to be able to refill that infantry line and get this back to effectively status quo. Otherwise, what will happen is you get mollywhopped. And that's what happened in our case, is we got molly whooped because we were, we, we lacked the infantry to hold the march. Um, and so in many ways you can see that it just, it just didn't work out. Now, of course, if you look at a skill detail, you'll see that, you know, again, Ice Dominion comes up quite a bit. Molly's a hell of a powerhouse as far as a hero for a lot of starter players. It's, it's a hell of a powerhouse. Now, of course, I can't speak on Gen 2 or Gen 3 yet, or even Gen 4 or Gen 5. Um, if you're wondering what I'm referring to by generation, it's it's basically uh, you, the, the heroes that you have right now starting out in a new state is only temporary. You'll actually get more heroes after a certain period of time, and I think it's around 40 days approximately. So within about a month and a half, roughly, you'll experience a new set of heroes. Um, of course, there's a lot of other events and stuff that will come up from this point in time. So, you know, can, you can only go back so far, but like here it's, you know, Saturday. So I can see that Hall of Chiefs is coming up start of Monday. I've got Alliance Championship coming up. I've got Frostfire Mine coming up. I've got Defeat Nearby Beasts. I've got the Lucky Wheel, which is, you know, again, probably going to be for Zen Man. So, I mean, if I want Zen Man, I mean, there you go. And then I got Fortress Battles come start of Wednesday, you know. And so one of the things I will say that about Hall of Chiefs is, is that if, if you want to watch my other video on this, it'll kind of explain what that event is. Now, I haven't played Frostfire in mine yet, but from my knowledge of it, we'll, we'll dive into that more and I'll make a video on it. Um, as far as power-up goes, this one's really straightforward. Just be the highest ranking player. Of course, me being who I am. I'm 3.8 mil and I'm in charge. So I have the number one spot, which means I get 50 some odd thousand or so diamonds. Now, as far as holding arena goes, I mean, in principle, you challenge and then you pay your daily challenges. If you're wondering what a good lineup looks like, I'm not a personal favorite of this method right now, but I've got one imp, two lancer, two marksman. I could suggest you to use two infantry, two marksmen, and one lancer, or two marksmen, one lancer, one infantry, and maybe, you know, you could even go three infantry and variations of the sort. But why I do this particular one is just because of the tiers that I have access to. I feel as though, like, you know, if, if I had to choose Natalie and Geronimo being up in front, and then maybe swapping out somebody like Gina for Natalie would, or Tat Natalia, I guess, would be a better choice just because of the advantages that come with those heroes. Um, of course, I still have Jesse back there, and Jesse's a pretty good hero to have. 
Um, because again, I'm I'm a full believer that a lot of squads are usually they, like for example, if you if you look at this guy, you got a pair of infantry, a pair of marksmen, and a lancer. And it's a f efficient, you know. And here you got a pair of venture, a pair of marksmen, and a lancer. You'll see that pattern comes up quite a bit because a lot of people love to use infantry and one marksman. You'll notice my pattern's a little different though. I'm using one infantry. And then I'm using two Lancers and two Marksmen. And I, that's because I'm trying very hard to eat out their Marksmen in the back, you know. But again, it's it's a losing battle in some way because you're really struggling to kind of eat all of the infantry with yours and keep them alive long enough without, you know, just getting completely crashed. But I usually bet on the fact that their infantry won't live long enough to see the light of day and the Lancers will end up surviving long enough that you know they inevitably eat up the marksmen and then i end up winning you know in part because of that and so i mean the only disadvantage is when those lancers you know so if i run into a player like fox for example i i panic a little bit because you know it's it's both the tier and also kind of you know it's it's understanding the lineups and knowing that you know okay if you go up against somebody with a certain quality of hero or even the you know, even the tiers of heroes that you can have, you know, like if a, if you have a four star, that's one thing. If you have a five, it's a completely different thing, you know, because of the quality of the skills that they can have in their disposal. Um, but more or less, you know, when it comes down to it, you just want to make sure that whatever you do decide to do as far as your heroes and your marches are concerned I think, practically speaking, it, it makes the most amount of sense. Obviously, as a whale, I, I can look at it, you know, practical, you know, from the perspective of what you need to max out. But free to play, I would say you're the biggest time sinks that I think a lot of people will probably dive into, regardless of whether they're pay to win or not, is that their infantry are going to be priced over everything. You're going to end up training and needing a lot of these troops a lot of the time. So you're going to want to have, and on average, probably more infantry than you do Lancers, and I think you're going to want typically more Marksmen than you do Lancers. Because really, hear me out, the logic to this is, is that infantry are effectively soaking up the march, and Marksmen are killing the other march. All the Lancers are doing are effectively making the Marksmen more inefficient. And so in that way, it, it's kind of one of those things where it's like, well, it really, if, if a rally was comprised mostly of marksmen and mostly of infantry, and there weren't as many lancers, that actually might work out <laughs> because of that. You know, it's just one of the things, too, you'll notice is that I'm also doing my research and the battle research is a pretty important factor. You want to make sure you dive your time into this. And of course, that means you're going to need steel, and so thus you need to be going in and doing your explorations and making sure you claim, because again, this is also going to, you know, obviously comprise with the steel that you're going to need to do your research, but also give you the XP you need to level your heroes. Um, of course, you know, for a lot of people, that that's, you know, these are all things that you're going to inevitably go back and forth with. Um, I will say that, you know, Given where I'm at in the game, I will say that one of the next investments of time and energy that I'm going to spend a lot of time into, actually, of all things, isn't really the heroes themselves, nor their skills, but actually the gear. Because the gear is going to be something that will be transferable across heroes. And so over time, as Gen 2 and Gen 3 and so on come along, I will be able to transfer that gear and move it to the next hero and be able to work on that next hero and that next tier. And so for that reason, trying to get these up and maxed out, as well as doing the mastery forging once you've gotten them to 20. Um, again, if you do decide to go that path, just make sure that you uh, watch this video that I've got here, um, because I do have a video all covering the gear side of this game as well. But I mean, fundamentally, you just want to make sure that you're, you're wanting to basically maximize the lethality of marksmen and lancers and increasing the HP. Now, if you're wondering why not increase the lethality of, like, infantry, it's like, you know, you can. I mean, it's not like you don't have to, but to me, it's it's not as much of a focus. I'm more concerned about keeping those troops alive than I am having them do damage. If I want anything to do damage, it's the marksmen doing the damage that I really care about. And the lancers are kind of just more of a, 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 a you know, a bonus, if anything. But Ultimately, those are my two cents on formations 
as well as stats and just everything regarding where I am at in the game. I hope this was somewhat helpful for you guys understanding the game. But again, if you do not understand something or want to know something better, join the Windout Survival Discord because it is a goldmine of information as far as everything. I've really, if anything, really just regurgitated a lot of what I've read on that Discord. So hopefully with some of this knowledge, you guys can figure this game out and be able to accomplish a lot more than I did in my first week. So, have a good one.